What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm removing a bunch of factory parts off of this Bonneville Scrambler build, and uh, let's just dive right into it. On today's episode, I will be removing the factory mirrors, uh, the drive chain, the rear fender, and uh, I need to take these off as well. These are the highway bars, um, aka crash bars, and, and if you lay this bike over on its side, this will protect the engine and, and cases and other things. Whoever installed this chose to go with the chrome, which is fine, but for our build, we want this matte black. I contemplated it, uh, doing it a gloss black, and I think if, if I end up redoing the frame, that's gonna be a matte black as well. Matte black uh, hub and wheels are going on this, so I want this to match. I'll be also hanging, um, I plan on hanging some fog lights or driving lights off of this in the front, and I want that to look nice as well. Um, I may take the covers off today as well on both sides, and I plan on taking this fender off I, I was looking at the setup here and I, and I really like the factory setup minus all this stuff back here. And if I don't, if I don't make or purchase a rear fender for this build, I'm just going to modify this one and uh, trim it and cut it and then just paint it. Uh, so we'll see. I think having a little nub of a fender would look really nice. That's also going to depend on what seat I run, uh, covers, tail light, tail tidy, all this. I know what I want the bike to look like. I don't have every single plan written in stone. That's the fun of doing these builds, especially for myself. So things like the rear fender, the tail tidy, I'm still doing a little bit of research on. I really don't want the license plate up here. I already ordered a special license plate for this bike, which is vertical. In state of Pennsylvania, you must have a vertical plate that reads vertical numbers and letters or a horizontal plate that reads, reads the um, numbers and letters horizontally. So I really want to um, have my license plate, I think I'm going to have it on this side, um, just kind of uh, vertical up where the rear shock is mounted right here. I think that'll look really nice. A lot of the tail, actually all the tail tidies that I've seen come with the plate mount and I don't need that. So I'm either going to have to build something or modify uh, one of the ones that I can get. So I'm going to cut the chain first get that off, may replace this with an all aluminum chain guard. These covers are gonna come off on both sides. I'm really curious to see what the electronics and uh, filters and stuff look like underneath there. Not many things are staying chrome on this bike. Everything that you see that's chrome or silver is all coming off, so uh, let's get to it. The mirrors are super easy to remove. There is a number six Allen that holds it uh, in place. Uh, it's right there in that hole. You literally just unbolt them and it comes right out. I'm going to do the other side as well and then move on to the next thing. Alright, both of these mirrors are off and seriously, doesn't that look way better and cleaner? On my R1 I run a bar and mirror and it's uh, very nice quality here. If you look in here you can see this white nylon insert. Not only does that keep things nice and tight, but uh, it keeps uh, this unit from vibrating so whenever you're looking at your mirror it doesn't you know it doesn't shake too much and you can actually see there's really nice bushings in here which uh, which allow things to uh, operate smoothly and then this I have pointing up because I wanted the mirror up a little bit higher and then you can also fold this mirror in it's foldable and it sits like that as I discussed in a previous episode, the entire front end is going to be gone. So the friend fender wheel, brake stuff, actually possibly the entire headlight turn signals, even this ignition here. I'm not going to spend too much time trying to tear into things, but maybe just remove the turn signals for now and see how clean it looks. All right, both of these bolts are out. Uh, the engine mount bolt and nut is completely out and the unit came right off <clears throat> the top where the frame is has these two hardened bolts and then these two welded steel nuts on a plate uh, on the other side super easy this thing is a breeze compared to something like this which is a royal pain in the butt so i was just filming and i walked back over and noticed an entire puddle down here and i was like what the heck is that here the crash bars had water and junk all inside there and it leaked all out so I guess that's pretty pretty bad design on their end when I get this back from the powder coater I'm gonna dry that up 
uh, spray some sealer inside there and uh, then cap this off probably. I don't want this to rust from the inside out and that's pretty bad design if you ask me. Alright the crash bar is off the front end and I put the motor mount bolt and uh, frame bolts back in. I will have to get to this at some point like I said but today is not the day I need to focus on removing stock parts. Onto these uh, covers, the reason I wanted to take them off is I envisioned this build having the carburetors and then pod filters and a lot of this stuff that's unnecessary, plastic covers, air intake box, all that stuff want to come out. Uh, but I wanted to show you what's behind the cover. So on this side, fairly simple. You have the rear master cylinder then you have the reservoir up here. Looks like somebody actually did the fluids in this thing. So it's fairly clean in there. That's a good sign. Uh, this is the factory uh, fuse block. I'm actually gonna keep this set up until sometime down the road when I do like a moto gadget or rewire the whole bike. Uh, not time for that yet. And just wanted to show you guys something here. If you look at these uh, fuses, they are marked with a green um, marker. And I believe they do that from factory, so you know which fuses have been replaced uh, since the, you know, since the bike was uh, factory and new. And none of these ones here look like they've been replaced. I haven't checked the other side yet, but I think that's what the marks are for. These are factory uh, markings from the from the manufacturer. So that's pretty cool. And this massive bulky uh, air filter assembly. I'm not really sure how I'm going to tackle this one. Um, I may just unbolt everything and remove this massive box and put pods on here and call it a day. We may need to jet these guys too. Also underneath the fuse cover there are images of what the fuses are for and I just wanted to mention there is a 10 amp fuse for heated grips. Now this thing doesn't come, it's right here, it's this guy right here. This thing doesn't come factory with heated grips however if you look right here there is a plug where you can um, hook up heated grips. Uh, at least that's what I assume they're for. And here we have the starter solenoid, uh, a couple of other relays, I assume for headlights and things like that. And then just wanted to show you this here. So that little intake is the intake essentially for the entire bike, right? That goes into the air box where the filter is right in here. And that is what feeds both of the carbs. Now you wonder why these bikes are so restricted from factory, that's why. Okay, so once I put the pods on here, I think that's what I'm gonna be running. Um, this will need jetted because it'll run way too lean. It's gonna have way too much air in there. Um, I looked at the exhaust. Initially, I was gonna have custom pie cut stainless exhaust made for this, but I really like this mendrel vent um, exhaust that's on it now. And it kind of ends right here behind the rear set. And I dislike the factory muffler so much, so um, I'm going to get a, a set of a little bit more modern pipes and I think I'm going to have them mount over here somewhere, right? And we'll go over that uh, in, a, in a later video. But these, these pipes are actually really nice looking. What do you guys think? Should I uh, purchase an aftermarket exhaust, have a custom exhaust made, or utilize these pipes that flow with the lines of the bike? and just have them ceramic coat them or wrap them or something like that and then just have uh, more modern cans on there because the, the whole look of the bike is going to be a little bit different with the Jigsaw front end like an updated shorty Acra mufflers or something like that would be very fitting so let me know what you guys think in the comments below. So I took the air filter out just to have a look and this thing is nasty. So this is what the filter inserts look like. Um, you just take a couple things off and sucker slides right out. Now, I don't want to start disassembling too much on this bike because I do want to start it up uh, and make sure everything runs okay and everything's okay with the transmission. So I'm actually going to put that back in there until the bike's running and everything. I found some bad news inside the air box. It is completely covered in oil. Um, there is a puddle of oil on both sides here and uh, I can explain where I believe that's coming from. As I mentioned before, um, I noticed that the cases were wet on the outside, and as soon as I went to look at the bike, I also found out that it was way overfilled with oil. I think what happened was the gentleman that did the oil change had it sitting on its side stand and then filled it up until the sight glass was full. Uh, on these bikes, you have to have it on a center stand or on a flat surface with the bike standing up. Uh, to get the level up so he essentially had way too much oil in there There's drain lines right underneath right in front of that flashlight They're supposed to drain uh, any excess oil or water out of the intake box. However on this 
um, it looks like they're clogged or something. So I'm gonna have to look at that as well, but look how restrictive, I mean, that's bad. There's like no airflow here. And I get it, they're supposed to be more efficient running um, than you know, we'd want them to. But From factory, these bikes get really good gas mileage, in my opinion, but they don't really have the performance that I think they should. I know that these engines are capable of running very healthy um, for what they are. They just, you know, they need to breathe and this doesn't help at all. So I know that I will be completely removing this and doing pods and uh, but i do want to address that oil issue so i think before i pop the filter in i'm going to uh, make sure that the lines are unclogged and i'm going to get all that oil out of there so it can at least you know run somewhat decent if you guys don't have a service manual and you want to learn how to work on your own bikes look it up on youtube or google or buy a service manual and just read through it it tells you very essential steps and things that you need to do in order to get your um, ride you know, 100%. I'll clean this up, clean the drains on both sides, and uh, make sure it's good to go before I put the filter back in, temporarily until I get this fired up. Yeah, pull the drain line off to show you guys what it looks like. Um, it's pinched off at the bottom, obviously, so things don't get up in there. If this was me, and I engineered this, I would definitely have a long line um, that you can just pull a plug out and drain this, or put like a little valve down here instead of factory crimping it, but I wanted to show you, take it over where the trash can is and show you a little bit. It is completely full. See that? It looks like water and oil. I'm gonna dump it. It's pretty nasty. Shouldn't be like that at all. Um, if anything, I'll, I'll leave this open. Um, I'm not gonna be off-roading it until the bike is probably completely finished. So I'll cut the bottom of this, put it back on the air box for now. Okay, next up is the chain. I have my DeWalt grinder, and the only thing that you really need to uh, take a chain off is either cut it, or a, use a chain breaker uh, tool, or you just grind off uh, one of the little pins on the chain, and then use the chain breaker tool to push the pin through. So I get a lot of messages about the chain and how I uh, grind and break the chain master link. So people are like, why do you even grind it? Why don't you just use the chain breaker tool and get the pin out? Um, you're just grinding it for no reason. I do a lot of chains every single week. So uh, your chain breaker tool can actually get damaged after time. That's why a lot of uh, ch uh, chain breaker tools and sets come with multiple breaker uh, pins. So if you grind the surface of that uh, pin that's been pressed, um, it, it presses out way easier. So it takes a little bit of time, but it's unless you're cutting the chain off, that's the best way to do it. So there's your answer as to why I grind before I press the pin out. So I'm gonna get my glasses on and uh, grind that down and remove the pin. So the chain comes out. This is probably one of the worst chains that I've ever um, taken off a motorcycle. It's in royally rough shape. Um, I don't know if you can tell here. It's really bad. It's been neglected. It's the original chain. Um, I guarantee it. And uh, it's time to ditch this thing. I'm either gonna run an open chain or I'm gonna get an aftermarket uh, chain guard. So I'm gonna pull this off and this cover off and we're gonna see what that looks like. 
All right, the uh, chain guard is off. I did put the bolts back in. I typically don't do that. I just bag and tag it. But um, I want these to be back in the frame. I don't want to disassemble this thing to the point where um, it's in boxes or bags. I do want to keep some stuff together. I loosened all the bolts on the front sprocket cover. This thing is freaking heavy and it's huge. I loosened all the bolts from the front sprocket cover. This thing is super bulky. Uh, it's cast aluminum and uh, I want to keep the bolts in the uh, spaces where they belong. I'll either put tape over the heads, that's how I keep track of which bolt goes where, or I will actually cut a piece of cardboard and draw this cover and then uh, poke these bolts through where they go. That looks awful. I'm not really sure if anybody ever serviced this, but what the hell's going on there? That's, yeah, that needs a lot of help. Now the goal today was to remove as much factory stuff off the bike that I'm not going to use. And so far we're doing a great job. I was going to do like the front turn signals and the uh, and, uh, uh, rear fender and stuff, but I decided to hold off. The reason is, I don't know if I'm removing the fender uh, permanently or if I'm going to modify this fender for my aftermarket setup. I was excited to start up the bike today, but I'm gonna hold off till probably the next video because in order to get this thing at least uh, ready, I have to replace the oil cooler because that has a huge crack in it and I have to drain out all the excess oil. I will try to fire it up with the old oil in there before I do an oil change. Uh, but like I said, that's probably gonna be the next video. I can't get too excited and get ahead of myself. So uh, next up on the list, I'm going to undo the seat and this uh, cover. This is, I believe, aftermarket with the um, solo seat. And then you have this like luggage rack in the back here. Uh, for the scrambler, I may keep that and just get this done in black. Louis Moto has a solo seat cover with the uh, diamond stitching up top in different color varieties and they also have matching uh, tank protectors slash uh, tank grips. So I think it would be really nice to have these both in diamond stitching or the other option is get a new replacement seat cover and then for the tank just peel these off and then repaint the tank. I also don't like this massive Triumph emblem on here so uh, once the tank is completely stripped I'm probably just gonna make everything smooth and then paint it. Next question is if I do a solo seat cover from Louis Moto, should I get the matching uh, diamond stitched tank pads or should I just go completely clean tank look with no emblem and no pads, just a cap, everything else nice and black. To pull the seat assembly off, there are two bolts. They're right here and they are knurled on the ends, so you can just take your hand and pull them off. If you pull both of these out, the seat completely comes off and I'll show you what it looks like underneath. All right, the seat is off and there are a couple of things that I have to disconnect. There's actually one plug right up here that disconnects the harness for the brake light and the turn signals. And there are two bolts here and two bolts in the rear and the entire fender should disconnect. Everything's open up here. There's really not much going on in the tail section. Like I said, the rear fender has four bolts and one harness plug. And uh, that's pretty much it to remove this entire. I wonder how much this weighs. I should put it on the scale. It's uh, pretty wonky and it's huge. And I think that's gonna wrap it up for today. We got the mirrors removed. I took off the crash bars. They're gonna go off with the rear hub to get powder coated. The front sprocket cover was removed and also the chain guard. I took the chain off. We also took the rear fender and the entire tail section with the tail light and turn signals off. We looked behind both of the covers on both sides. I uh, got the seat off and um, the air filter, the issue with the oil. Took care of all that, cleaned it all up. In the next episode, I'm going to be removing and replacing the oil cooler. I'm gonna check out uh, if there's any issues with the lines. We're gonna be getting the oil up to the proper level. And uh, regardless of the condition of the inside of the fuel tank, I'm still gonna fill it up and we're gonna to try to fire it up and see if there's any other issues and things that we need to address before we start hooking this thing up with fresh new parts. If you enjoy this episode, please hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, Comment in the section below. Let me know uh, if there's any suggestions or something you guys would like to see on this build series. And we will see you guys in the next one.